main state, my most popular state. I've created a transition between those states, and I've actually created a custom component that works you know, when we hover over it. So now I want to do a couple other things. One, I want to enable this most popular, so I want to actually do something that will enable this most popular click. So that when we click on this most popular link, it will actually load that most popular state. And I can do that by just turning it into a button. So I'll select it. And you can see here my text links. One of the things that Flash Catalyst does right now in the max build is when you have a text object with a stroke on it, it'll bring in both the stroke layer and the text layer. So I'm going to select both of those here in most popular and the most popular outer stroke layer. And I'm going to convert that to a button. Now when we did the custom component, we just had our own states that we could create. But in the button component, we've already got up, over, and down disabled states, kind of the typical states for a button. So what I want to do is I want to enable or change the over state here. So I'll just click on it inside of the HUD. And it'll bring me into that same component editing screen. But you can see the, comp the states there are already set up. So I'll scroll over here. You can see there's my, my button one, all four states, that that text object is there. And what I want to do is I want to create a, a, some, a rectangle over the most popular object so that when I hover over it, it has a rectangle behind it. So I can do that by actually using just the primitive tools here. So I can, I've got all these primitive drawing tools up here that I can use. So I'll select the rectangle. And then I'll just draw the rectangle around the most popular link here. And that'll bring up the properties panel so I can actually change some of the properties here. So I'll go ahead and change the background to black. And then I can change the stroke here. Let's see. Uh, D1, D0, D9. That looks good. All right. And then I can change the opacity. We'll change it to 70. But that doesn't really look what I, like what I'm going for. Uh, so what I can do here is basically just like I can in all the other CS4 layers panels, I can actually drag this rectangle down to the most popular. I can drag the most popular up so that I can change the rectangle so it's behind that most popular link. All right, that looks good. That looks a little bit better. Maybe I can move it down a little bit and center it. Yeah, it looks okay. So now what I want to do is on the down state, I want to also include this rectangle, but make a couple of changes to it so that we can tell we've actually clicked on the button. So I can just select, select the down state here. And then all I need to do, you kind of notice over here in my layers panel, like I mentioned, it only has that rectangle in one state, so I, I don't actually have it in any of these states, and it's only showing the blue rectangle. But all I have to do is click on the I button here, and it's going to bring that rectangle in, and then I can make changes to it, so I can, let's say, increase this stroke by two, and then I'll change the opacity just a little bit to make it a little bit more see-through when we, when we click down on it. All right, cool. And we've got a little sort of simple fade effect here. So we've edited our button. We've used the primitive drawing tools to change the look and feel of the most popular link. And the last thing I want to do is turn this into an actual, you know, add an interaction so that when it actually, when we click on it, it'll move into that changed most popular state. So I can do that by just using the, the custom interactions of the HUD. So here I got on click. I'm going to change, play the transition to the state. And I'm going to go to the most popular state. All right, perfect. The very last thing I want to do is I want to make it possible for people to search this microsite. So if I come over here, you can see I've got this search for trips. I've got a rectangle around it. And I want to convert all this artwork into something that will be a text input box. So over here in the layers panel, you can see there's layer 21. That's the rectangle around it. There's the stroke object. And then I've got this text object, the search for trips text object. So I'm going to select all three of these things. And I'm going to convert them to a text input control using the HUD. And then I'll go ahead, you see this little button, the HUD changed a little bit to go to edit parts. So one of the things that's interesting about Flash Catalyst and kind of the new skinning model in Flex is that some of the more complex components are divided up into skin parts. For instance, for a scroll bar, you'll have a skin part for the thumb, for the track, and for the increment and decrement buttons. And for text input components, you have a, a skin part for the actual text. Now, normally Flash Catalyst is smart enough to know that if you've got a text and a rectangle selected, you probably want the text to be the actual text part. But I kind of want to just show exactly how this works as a, comp as a component. So you can see if I scroll back up here, uh, I can actually select this search for trips, and then I can assign it a specific part. Uh, in this case, I want to assign the text view, which is actually the text that gets rendered. So I'll select that. Like I said, Catalyst does this for you, but if you're working with more complex components like scroll bars, you'll actually have to go in and tell Flash Catalyst which pieces of artwork go to which text parts. So kind of a good example of how to do that inside of the HUD and the component screen. All right, so we've got that. We've set our text. And now we can go back to the main application, and we're basically done. So I can go up here to the File menu, and we can run the project. We'll be able to open it up inside of uh, the default browser. 
And so what it's going to do now is actually going to compile a SWIF so that we can click and start to interact with this. And notice we haven't really written any code in, at all for this application. So we've got a whole lot of transitions when our SWIF loads. We've all done visually using Flash Catalyst. We'll see if it loads it in Firefox. It may take a little bit. Let's try it again. There we go. File, run project. There we go. So here is our Swift file. All right, we can hover over the most popular. There's our tag, our uh, gray box that we created. Click on it. We'll go into that new state. I can hover over here to Mont Blanc. It'll bring in the detail state like I wanted it to. And then over here, I can search for trips. I can select all this text and say, uh, let's search for Rainier. And notice it uses the exact same font that I brought in from Photoshop and the same typeface and everything. All this is embedded into the SWIFT. So now that we've got the project kind of the way we want it to, there are a couple things that we can do. If this was all we wanted to do, we can go up here to File, and we can publish this to a SWIFT file. And we can we'll save it in comps, so we'll just call it Expedition Simple. And it'll actually export the SWIFT for us as a release SWIFT, so we could put it on the web somewhere, or we could use a standalone SWIFT and put it on a USB drive or something like that. But kind of the more interesting thing, as it creates that publishing SWIFT, is that we can now turn this, this Flex project and give it over to a developer who can open it up in the next generation of Flex Builder, Flex Builder Gumbo. So, wait for this to go through its thing. All right. If I switch over here to code view, you can see that we've been creating code this entire time, as you probably saw in the keynote demo. And a lot of this code is going to look a little bit strange because you've got a bunch of bitmap graphics tags here. Uh, but kind of you can see it create how it created the transitions. You can also see how it created components. So there's a generally a nice uh, difference or nice separation between logic of the component here. And you can see uh, there's the sort of component architecture, and there's the state information, and then there's a skin in sort of which state's going to use. And you can switch over here to look through the project and see that we've actually got some of our uh, components as individual skin parts, the button, the text input, and that custom control, all in separate files. But I can actually, you notice I saw on the hover thing that I've got that, uh, I can show it to you over here, on the Mont Blanc component, that I've got that Google Map thing, that I maybe, maybe I want to turn that into a, a mapping component so that people can actually interact with that on the main detail view. So I can actually save this as an FXP project. Expedition sample FXP, we'll save it to the desktop. And once I've saved this FXP file, I, it's just a zip file that has all the assets, all the code for this Flex project. I can give that FXP file to a developer, for the, and they can open it up in Gumbo, and then start adding the back-end logic or the connectivity to it, maybe wire up that Google Maps component so that I can actually interact with it inside of that detail view. And then the designer can actually make changes, and you can go back and forth, and kind of, there's kind of a nice workflow with the Merge tool in Flex Gumbo. Uh, but that is another to or tutorial for another day. So for now, uh, hopefully this gave you a little bit of a head start in how you can use Flash Catalyst to give you an idea of some of the, uh, some of the functionality. Next time I'll do some Illustrator stuff and I'll show you again that merge tool and how the workflow goes between Flex Builder Gumbo and Flash Catalyst. So thank you very much.